This is the Lowdown with Brave Mama, a community and safe space to help you on your journey living with pelvic organ prolapse. Hi, my name is Steph Thompson. I am your host and I have also lived with prolapse for over seven years. So I know exactly firsthand how hard it can be to find information in this space that is helpful and trustworthy. I just want you to know that this community is here to see you, hear you, and support you. Today on the show, I'm going to be sharing the number one thing that helped me living with prolapse in the 2022. First of all, I'm going to let you know what I did, why I did it, and then how I did it. So with so much to cover, let's just jump straight in. All right. So the decision to actually share this was a bit of a difficult one because I feel like in social media spaces, a lot of women are talking about this, but I didn't want to feel like I was on the bandwagon of a trend because I had tried this numerous times over the last three years and I felt like I failed. I wasn't successful. So therefore this time when I tried this uh, again in January, 2022, I decided not to tell anyone. Only my husband knew at that time because I just thought if I fail it again, people are going to know and it's very obvious. So the one thing that I did in 2022 that significantly helped me living with pelvic organ prolapse was to stop drinking alcohol. Now, if you are a wine lover and you love that tipple, this episode may not be for you. You may want to skip to the next one and that's totally fine. But if you are here right now thinking, "Hmm, I've thought about this a little bit or I've seen this a little bit, or I'm just curious, I'm just curious to know what has happened for someone else living with prolapse who has stopped alcohol. The reason why I wanted to stop was on multiple levels because we know now that your body is all connected, so it's not all running in isolation, and what you put into your mouth and digest affects, obviously, your whole uh, digestive system, which then also has this flow-on effect for our prolapse. So I, I struggled with constipation, and obviously, when you have constipation, your prolapse symptoms are felt more significantly. And so I thought, well, if I stopped the constipation, if I was able to, and then I was able to empty my my bowel and my bladder properly, surely that should help with symptoms. So I'm always a bit of a, a curious cat. I'm a what if, like, let's just see what if type of person. So I experimented with this at first. Obviously, this is an extra layer on top of already focusing on diet, water, health, exercise, all of those things. But just alone by stopping drinking alcohol, this is what actually happened. I realized that by stopping alcohol, I've also stopped something else. I thought I was healthy. I had my veggie smoothies in the morning. I had the dates. I had the chia seeds and all the things to stay regular. But every time I would have wine with dinner and Showing up in full vulnerability today, I'm going to share with you, it wasn't just a wine with dinner. It wasn't just one glass. It was a minimum a bottle to myself, potentially a second bottle, and then probably even sharing the third. And we're talking weekends, weekdays. Um, it's hard to even say that out loud because I'm putting that judgment on myself, knowing that that's not a great thing for for anyone, really. And so after that third bottle or set even the second bottle, I was then reaching for the fridge at 10 o'clock at night for all the things that I had tried to not eat in order to keep my bowel health and prolapse under control. I was going in and eating them anyway, probably twofold if, you know, if you think about it. So then the next morning I would wake up and be constipated go through the smoothies and the juices and the exercise and the breathing and the, oh, God, I don't want to be constipated. And then I was like, oh, I'm still constipated <laughs> and it's still affecting my prolapse. So it was on this um, vicious rat wheel cycle, you could say, of not actually being conscious of what I was putting into my mouth. The second part to that is that obviously alcohol, you become really dehydrated. So then, of course, that has a flow and effect for constipation as well. Once I finally realized, oh, okay, I'm doing this thing. I'm doing it and I don't even know it because I'm intoxicated at the time. 
The second thing was I would then go to bed at night, pass out, fall asleep really quickly, but then wake up in the middle of the night, wide awake in pools of sweat and be really uncomfortable and then have poor sleep. So as you can see now, you're kind of putting the picture together, bad diet, poor sleep, prolapse symptoms and thinking to myself, I'm just stuck like this, I feel terrible. And then obviously when we feel physically horrible and terrible, what happens to our head and heart? It follows. Our mental health space brings us down. So that's exactly what happened to me. I was in this cycle of drinking alcohol. And let's face it, the reason I can now very clearly see why I drank alcohol in the first place was to numb the pain, was to numb the pain and the symptoms of pelvic organ prolapse. It was to numb the pain that I had this loss of life that I really yearned for before children. It was to numb the pain of just not feeling myself anymore. So the Band-Aid solution was to drink the wine to feel okay for a very short period of time, but its long-lasting effects were not beneficial. So then I had that, oh, what if moment, what if you just stopped? And in that January, I made that decision. Um, It wasn't easy. So now I'm going to tell you how I did it for good this time, because it's been over a year now, which is why I'm feeling confident to share it. Because even in this last year, there's been moments of thinking, oh, I could just have one glass. I could just take the edge off. I'm feeling really uh, a lot of pain today. I've overdone it. I just need a glass of red with dinner. That has happened often. But now I feel like I'm past that hurdle as well. I'm going to share with you exactly the things that I did to stop drinking. The first thing I did was I created a connection by accident through an interview I was doing here with one of the mums for season two. And it was just right at the very end, very organically, she just happened to mention that she was going to stop drinking alcohol. And I was like, oh, tell me more. I'm really interested in that. I didn't want to admit that I'm interested in that, but tell me what you're doing. And she said, I'm reading this book. And I said, oh, I'm reading a book too. Less wine, more time or more time, less wine. Yeah, more, less wine, more time makes sense. So I was reading that one and the person who I was interviewing was reading another book. So she was reading this one. For those of you who are are not watching, it's called The Naked, This Naked Mind, Control Alcohol, Find Freedom, Discover Happiness and Change Your Life. So we did a book swap. So we had this little tiny community between her and I. We did a book swap. And so I read both of those books. And I'll put the links in the show notes, of course, if you wanted to go and look for them or borrow them from the library. And it just gave me more insight into the fact that I didn't see it as a drinking problem or an alcoholism problem because it is so socially accepted to be drinking wine, probably not to the extent I was, but it's really something that is socially the thing to do. So when you read these books and you realize that one bottle, two bottle, three bottles, actually um, probably an addiction and a problem, you've got a bigger thing to work on. Then I was able to have that connection, read the books, and then seek some professional help because Even when I mentioned it, I think to some family members, they said, oh, do you have a drinking problem? I didn't, they don't see it. So I didn't see it. And so when you do speak to an expert and they're like, and they kind of uh, do it in a way that holds up a mirror that says, this is how you behave. These are the things that happen. If you don't want this, you need to change something. And that is by stopping drinking. So around, I think it was my birthday, so around that May time last year, I had done so well and it got to May and I thought, oh, I'm just going to have one one little cocktail. And I, I remember I was in a hotel. I'd just been at a high tea function. I'd met some beautiful people from this community. I was so excited to be there. And I, at the end of the night, I had quite a lot of symptoms because there was a fair bit of walking around that day. And I sat down, I thought, oh, maybe just one drink. I messaged my husband and I told him I was going to do it. And his reply really saved me. He said, you've come this far. Think about how good you feel right now. Don't ruin that. And that for me was immense. 
because for someone else to see and recognize that the positive changes that have ha- that had happened for me in that short period of time was not worth losing and was not worth letting go of. So I didn't. I felt so proud of myself. And I think for anyone who's on this journey, every attempt that you make, every win that you have, you have to celebrate that. So I now wouldn't look at my past two or three years of attempts as failures anymore. They were just stepping stones towards being able to achieve what I wanted. Now, for me, there's so many amazing things that have happened. So obviously, constipation is very minimal these days in, in, you know, around that cycle, that time of the month, it does happen a little bit, but it's much, much easier to control, which therefore has a flow on effect for my prolapse symptoms. It's not as bulky, not as heavy, not as painful, I guess, all the time. And then that has a beautiful flow on effect for your mind and your spirit because it allows you, it gives you space to open up to new things because there's no brain fog in the morning, because there's no deep, dark depression and anxiety about being stuck in this prolapse space, it gave me light and I tried some new things. So late, late last year, I connected with people who were doing beautiful things in breath work and meditation, which I'd never done before. As a black and white style thinking person in the past, I had just always thought that was a bit magical, mystical stuff that doesn't work. But I'm telling you, it has definitely helped me along my journey living with prolapse. So I'm going to answer this question now because I'm pretty sure you're asking like, well, is your prolapse still there? Do you still feel the symptoms? The answer is yes. Physically, I don't think the prolapse itself has changed grades or has done anything magically like that. But me, taking control of my bodily functions and managing them so much better has reduced the amount of times that I feel the symptoms for longer. So yes, by the afternoon, I'm still feeling that it's there. But I guess also part of that meditation and manifestation piece is I've learned two things, which I actually will be creating episodes on separately, is perspective and acceptance. It has allowed me to accept and be like, okay, this is my body today, this morning, just do the best you can do. Knowing by the afternoon, there will be some level of discomfort. And instead of trying to fight that, instead of trying to numb that, do the things that you talk about in this community. Put your feet up against the wall. Give yourself permission to lay down and not feel guilty. So I've really started to practice, put into a lot better practice, the things that we share on this community that we know that are helpful. I felt like I was, you know, probably a bit of a hypocrite. I'd say, oh yeah, just do this and just do that. But I never gave myself the time. And now I'm allowing myself that time and space to do those things, to alleviate the pressure, to be able to then do the things in the nighttime that we all have to do. I hope by sharing this with you at this level of intimacy, you understand and appreciate that we are to look at all aspects of living with pelvic organ prolapse, every single part. If you have been here for a while and you've listened to all of the episodes and you think that there's something still that we have not covered, I encourage you to reach out via email. There'll be a link down below where you can let us know because we want to serve and provide everything that you need in this space. And just before we head off for this episode, I have something brand new and really cool to be sharing with you from one of our favorite podcast partners who have been a massive supporter of this community forever. It is Modi Body. So yes, they traditionally do period underpants. However, there is something really new and cool for you too. They've been able to use that same technology of wicking away fluids and sweat and put them into a new range of sleepwear. Keeps you really cool and gives you the best night's sleep. Now, of course, for you, the listener, we have reached out to them and asked for a 15% off promotional code. So if you wanted to try them, the link will be in the show notes and all the terms and conditions are there as well. So until next week, bye for now. Mama.